Tahu, we're live. We are live. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm doing good. We've got a workshop. We do. Right now. Right at this very moment. Do you know what it's going to be about? Yes. How <laughs> to measure content ROI. Good I love answer. This topic. Good answer. This is probably our most popular workshop that we do. Absolutely. Yeah. Like when we throw this one out there, it gets attention. Yes. So we're very excited to do it again. Um, it's always a little bit different every time we do it. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're, we've got a lot of ground to cover in this one. It's going to be an action-packed workshop. So we're going to dive right in. Sounds good. Sound good. Um, so we're going to, we've already said hi. And Stephen's trying to make the screen change so you can see what I'm showing. Didn't um, like me. You got to put the, oh, I see. All right. There we go. So we've already said hi. Please give us some likes, throw some comments into the chat. Uh, we'll pay attention to that. Usually we do a slightly longer preamble, but I really want to get right into this here. Um, so we always do an exercise. Um, so the handout that you're going to find uh, is at flyw.co slash content ROI. Um, what this is going to let you do is just give you a framework for uh going through the motions with us today. Uh, we, we're gonna coach on making sure that you understand the stage that you're in in your digital experience journey, what you're being very intentional about your goals, then thinking about the content that's gonna drive towards that, ultimately um, uh, resulting in a conversion. Uh, and then the what we're really here to unpack uh, is measuring that attribution. That's what we're driving towards is understanding, yes. wait a minute, how did that all come together? Okay. Because so, it, yeah, again, everybody yeah. knows all these stages, but I would say where I see 99% of it that fails is that attribution right there. Stage. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we're going to, that's where we're getting to today. So how do you measure the ROI of your content? Um, we're going to start with sort of like some first principles here. Okay. Yeah. So like, what does everything mean and how is this all going to come together? We are talking about how to make sure that your content is resulting in your desired outcome. Correct. Okay. Um, it and and um, so so some vernacular, some terms. We're going to talk about touch points and conversions. Okay. So touch points are your content. Conversions are what you're trying to um, have. Uh, your desired outcome, what you're going to try and make have happen. So that's what you want to measure is how those touch points are driving towards uh, that, that conversion. Correct. Okay. And then, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, well, we're right so, here so, already. So, so, so some of the common pitfalls that, you know, we typically see, especially when we're working with our customers. Um, and I will say this, when you're working with larger organizations that have multiple business units that are running different campaigns. A lot of the times when I see that funnel, because that what we just showed is kind of a sideways funnel, right? Yep. You've got all your content. Those business units aren't connecting with the other business units. That content isn't really, you know, people are great at putting out the content, but what is the action to it. How many touch points does it take to make a sale or get that person to the next phase of your conversion? And that's where I see a lot of the pitfalls right now because there's not a good content strategy out there. There's no kind of governance oversight on what it is that they're measuring. Essentially what it comes down to, and you've said it well, is I think every modern digital marketer knows the deal here. You, yeah. you need to have a you need to you need to drive towards that outcome you need to have conversions you need to have these moments of intention whether that's a sale or a sign up or a phone call what have you <laughs> and that's obvious yes and people are like okay i gotta do this content marketing thing i need a digital experience i need to keep it fresh and active and so then they put out content and these things exist in the same space yep. they're they're close to each other they're around each other um, but we're going to tell you about how to get a lot more intentional, um, about connecting those dots and driving it towards that funnel that we, that we showed a moment ago. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So, uh, a couple of, a uh, few other terms here and we do workshops on 
each one of these specifically. So there's a lot more depth that we could be dr drilling down to, but just to make sure we're all on the same page using the same terminology for, for today. Personas, touch points, and conversions. Um, do you want to just briefly explain one of these three, Stephen? Put you on the spot. Well, I'll explain a persona is, well, thanks. You just <laughs> threw it up on this. Is who? Um, and I'll just say this. I think most people that we're seeing on this workshop are going to understand what a persona is. My complimentary to that is start small if you aren't really sure about what your persona is going to be. I've worked with customers especially when we start getting into those large enterprise customers, yep. they say, hey, let's have 10 personas. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, Don't do you that. You can't even measure two at this point. Right. Let's start small and grow out. So the persona really is who is your main customer? Who is so your... So it's, it's that definition of your audience segment, Correct. right? And so why it's included in this workshop is because you need to put that frame around what you're doing when yes. you're going to when you're going to evaluate whether your content's doing its thing well, wait a minute, who is it there for? Okay. Yep. So even if you don't have a formal persona, you can join that workshop later. Uh, know who you're trying to talk to. Yep. You got your touch points, which is the, how are you going to talk to them? Okay. That's your blog posts. That's your articles. That's your videos. That's your social channels. That's your website in general. And the conversion is the, what, what are you trying to have them accomplish? Um, once upon a time, it was just like, well, I have my website there so that they have something to go and look at after I meet with them. Okay, that's fine, but I think we're talking to an audience here who's trying to get a little bit more sophisticated than that. Correct. Okay, so personas, touch points, uh, and, con and conversions. The next thing that you want to now think about when you've got those things in mind is the journey that you are trying to take people on. And hopefully everybody's familiar with this kind of a model as well. You want to take somebody from being an anonymous uh, individual who doesn't know anything about you. You want to give them some awareness you want to bring them into your orbit. They now become a visitor, but they're anonymous. And then you want to figure out uh, who's actually uh, an interested candidate to work with you, to collaborate with you, to um, uh, to be invoiced by you. Exactly. <laughs> um, and those are your leads. Yep. And okay, then so we're getting hotter and more specific as as this goes along. Yeah. And I just want to preface here. I I mean it's. We've got our nice little straight line, but it's never a straight line. You're giving away. That's on the next slide. Oh, well, geez. <laughs> See, I'm ahead of the point. But if we, again, so, when we're talking about deals and customers and the journey, you know, I know we're going into the next slide, but I want to just say, you know, when we're talking about touch points, touch points for me are like, how crazy can you be on the top of your funnel? Like yep. do some fun things like blogs. Maybe you're going to go out and do Maybe some videos nice are more fun than videos, blogs. workshops, interactive games, conferences, <laughs> whatever you might do just to see where your heavier touch points are going to lead you. And that's when I'm looking at the journey here. That's what I'm saying. Cause you don't know which touch points are really going to be active and you don't know how many touch points in the beginning it takes to get to a deal. Right. So common pitfalls, you mentioned it. Yeah. There's, there's thinking about this in a linear fashion. Correct. It's, oh, I'm going to take somebody and they're going to go from the beginning to the end and they're never going to change their position in that. And they're always going to remember who, who I am. And if they come back six months from now, they come back with that same context. Or yeah. if they bought something from me, they're obviously going to know everything about me and buy a different service from me again. Uh, well, when I say that, it sounds ridiculous, right? Like, yeah, and everybody absolutely. watching is going to be like, oh, okay, yeah. But I can guarantee we're all guilty of falling into that mindset, right? So that does not happen. That is not a reality. People do not engage with you. They do not experience what you have to offer in a straight line. It comes at you in all different ways. You have to make sure that everybody knows everything about you um, um, so that when they're coming back, uh, they're ready to re-engage with you. You've got something that that um, talks to your audience when when that moment is is available. You were getting into as well, sort of different points along that that journey. Yeah. Um, and so let's bring that back up again. What we're what we're getting at here. So so far we haven't talked about the mechanics of actually measuring the R the ROI of your content at all. Right. Correct. Okay. So that's 
we showed it at the beginning, but that's the last piece of this puzzle. Okay. So why are we spending so much time avoiding getting to the heart of how you do the measurement? Because if you're not intentional and deliberate and formal about all these other mechanics, you're not going to be able to do that last part. 100%. It is the, what you just shared, where it's all those squiggly lines and that content is not, it is not a straight line. And I'll say this, I don't think we have one customer that we help that has some sort of just you're looking at their we're helping them right. with their analytics and the reporting right and then they we come back to them and we show them a straight line to where they got the deal like right. it's right. it's like no 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 no. it took this many touch points oh this touch point today happens to be really hot well yeah. how do you use a blog that might have been you might have put out three months ago all of a sudden it gets picked up right seo hits it that's what i'm saying so i agree 100 percent um, and so you also started talking about the fact that you need to think about where your touch points have influence Correct. in this entire journey. And I think a lot of attention always goes to the top of this funnel. How do I get yes. more eyeballs into onto my site? How do I get more visitors? And there's all kinds of ways of doing that. Um, the goal here is to get those fresh faces onto your site, into yeah. your experience to engage with you. And we'll find nine times out of 10, most marketing teams have this in spades, right? They're very good at getting in view, getting eyeballs to their page. They're very good at, you know, Hey, we're going to run this campaign. Let's see how many people we can acquire through ads, through social, through media coverage. And so the reason that we just split that up for a moment yes. is to emphasize the fact that your journey, your overall engagement is comprised of smaller steps, sub journeys, if you will. And so why are you laughing at me? No, I'm, <laughs> it, it's funny it, no, we're just going through this with different customers and I'm just like, oh, I've, I'm hoping they're on the workshop. So uh, a, you can have multiple conversions along the, the, the journey. Yes. Absolutely. And you can have a different strategy and you can be thinking about those steps very discreetly. And you can have campaigns that enable those as well. So don't forget that part as well. And when you're measuring the effectiveness of your content, maybe you're trying to draw that, that line too far. Well, I ran some ads. Where's my deal? Exactly. Okay. So, and make, that's, go ahead. And you've said this before the top of your funnel, the, the, all those touch points, try a lot of different things in the beginning. Like, try different things to measure because mm -hmm. what you're trying to do right now is just measure impact. Because you may try three different kind of top of the funnel campaign touch points. Yep. And the goal then is to see just how they start to trickle down into more actionable. Um, when people decide that they, oh, I am going to sign up. Right. Because they may not in the first touch point. So the more you do up top and you are able to measure, again, we come back to the measurement part of it. And this is where I know we're about to get into it. Yep. But that's what you're really looking at is you're trying to measure the success and failures that you have. Because it might be you, you've you done a good job with a blog, but now you just have to do a little better. It could be that you have this larger campaign where you've got media, everything. It mm -hmm. just might, you may need just a little bit more. Might need a different touch point, but you have to measure. You do. And okay, so we're... we're Jumping. You, yeah, you, you keep spoiling the end. I know. <laughs> I, I'm too far. So we won't belabor this point. That yes. I think we've already kind of made the point is that think about that journey in different phases so that you're not trying to build a bridge too far. Correct. Um, and that there's perhaps something different that has to happen when your audience is at a different moment in that engagement. Uh, with you and they might be looking for something different and there might be a different way to do that and you won't know if you're not measuring the discrete steps if you're just trying to say well where's, where's hey we my got deal? this many likes now yeah. where's the deal exactly Didn't, where did they go from a like 
Okay, so side. we're 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 down to sort of the real meat and potatoes here. Okay, of how do we measure uh, that experience and and that attribution, and that's what this is all about. Okay, so there are all kinds of tools that can that can do this for you. You can use. Google Analytics, what you want to be able to do is now that you've thought about what is that conversion? What is that behavior I'm trying to influence? What's that desired outcome? You want to make sure that you have a, have that set up as a moment in whatever platform you're using. Um, and it's an event in Google Analytics or it's a filter on your pages or something like that. We're going to show you... Uh, Safinity Insight in a minute. It's a platform we're very familiar with. We don't want to turn this into an ad for any particular platform, but it just helps the light bulb go on to say, oh, I get it. Or, or I see how I can be doing this in a more sophisticated manner. HubSpot can do similar things. We're talking about something similar to lead scoring and, and, and nurturing and whatnot and, and uh, drip campaigns and things like that. Uh, but we'll show you how to be very intentional about that. Correct. Um, advance the slide. So... What you want to be, I just sort of spoke to this without advancing the slide, be, be intentional about knowing what your desired outcomes are and how to identify that those things have happened. If you are just putting out content and you know that there's a sign up form somewhere, but you're not saying, okay, wait a minute. If, if I don't run this campaign with that measurement already thought about and try to go back after the fact and go, oh, right. How do I, where's the signal? Um, uh, you're, you're going to have a much more difficult time. The other thing we want to emphasize here is that this is not a single, I mean, we've kind of said it already, but there's, it's, it's not a single one step, two step kind of a thing. Okay. You want to, you want to go, it's, it's a multi-step solution most of the time. Um, and don't forget what happens after that conversion happens, even if it's the ultimate conversion, you've gotten the sign up, you've gotten the deal, you still have engagement that you need to foster. You want to renew that and whatnot. So you're, I challenge everybody when, if you're building journeys, if you're already thinking about this to add an extra step or to look at how it provides a feedback cycle um, to come around again. And, and again, that's what these solutions will do. Like uh, GA4, uh, Google Data Studio, really diving in deep, Siphonity Insights, Campaign Monitor, HubSpot, really doesn't matter, take your pick. Um, just working with those to see when touch points happen. Most of the time you can actually identify, oh, I noticed now I'm just taking three touch points before a deal starts to funnel right. through. When somebody's comfortable with, you know, filling out a form or starting their journey of buying, right? And giving you more information. Um, just understanding that and going through that measurement is what you're looking for. And that's what these tools do. Okay, so okay. let's let's roll forward here because we've got a Done. few slides that show uh, one of these platforms. Uh, so again, setting up, and this is this is real data. We've obscured the, the actual site and the client here, but you, maybe you, <laughs> you can even figure it out with a few of the evidence here. But you want to be very intentional about what is that conversion that I'm looking to impact and what's my signal and what are the touch points that led to that moment happening? And with the right platform, with the right tool set up, you can see how that interaction is changing uh, over time. Um, personas can be defined in a good platform like this. You can create rules that identify the behavior of traffic on your website without knowing who they are. Correct. And this is different from what you can find in a platform like Google Analytics. This can be done sort of in a roundabout way, um, but a good platform that's helping you measure your content ROI is helping you understand from an audience behavior perspective, how different groups of users are interacting with your content this specific example that I'm showing on the screen right now, we created a whole bunch of personas yes. and a bunch of different examples. And we thought we'd see a very even distribution of the engagement with the content. And what was more eye-opening was not who's engaging with this the most. It's, oh my goodness, I thought for sure this group down here would, would be, be number one. Number one yeah. would be representative Absolutely. of most of my traffic. And have we got the rule wrong? 
like there was a there was a head scratch moment of like, well, hold on a second, did we define that properly? Correct. Well, we had, and that told us something very eye opening. So we had built measurement and journeys for an audience that we had assumed or we we'd had a an assumption that they were a, a largely represented portion of our traffic, and it turned out they weren't. Correct. And again, if we're looking at Sitefinity Insight, when you're doing this in, say, Google, this is going to be a much harder task. Yes. It's because you're, you're working with their behavior paths and good yeah. luck. With Insight, I'd actually say it's it's close to a mild or a light CDP. Sure. Because you get that data input very simply. There's a ways to attach it. So you get more structure. So I know in the, the initial conversation i said start small mm-hmm. actually with insights you can go a little larger you, you can we're, yeah. we're just trying to drip this out exactly and get people to, to figure it out so when you have that kind of information set up then what you can do here is see quite clearly well what touch points led to that desired uh to that desired outcome so you'll get an attribution report that says oh these are the pieces of content and and there's a weighting to sort of how far away from the actual conversion did that touch point contribute to the rest of the journey um, to then show me what's ha- what's helping drive towards that desired outcome. Um, and so here you can see a, a, a better example of that particular um, conversion taking place, how frequently that got um, triggered. Um, we're looking at, you know, sort of com- Relative to the course of time, um, is are we going up or down from from one month uh, to the next? Um, that specific conversion is coming through with the top personas that are registering for that event, and we're seeing the kind of touch points um, from 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 pages or other content and how that's coming through. Are they coming from a search engine? Are they coming from another site? Are they coming from social? Um, or is it a particular page that's helping drive this? Um, um, this activity. Yeah. And then for me, and, and again, this isn't for all customers, but as a salesperson and somebody who loves diving into this right after this, I would actually say, this is when you start to identify maybe lead scoring. It's yes. after the attribution It's after you understand conversions, because you can't really apply lead scoring until you understand well, until you have what's leads. going on. <laughs> yeah. And I, because this comes up a lot and I'm just prefacing this because it's come up recently, is, you know, you don't try to measure each piece of content right away. Just try to, you know. Well, there's a difference between measuring, measuring for a lead. specific hit yeah, on, a particular, on a particular piece of content versus measuring how that is contributing to your desired conversion. Uh, yes. And then I don't want to get too far off topic here, but lead scoring then helps you filter the conversions that you've had to say, well, if, if this is working, if this is firing and you've got a, a, a long list then of leads, well, how do you prioritize that? Correct. Right. So then you want to drill down on the hottest leads that have had the most engagement and it's a different kind of layer of this uh, measurement. Thank you. You yeah. said what I, perfect. <laughs> Love it. Uh, okay. So that's the, the concept. We gave you that, um, that worksheet at the top here. Uh, So let's bring that up and show the PDF that we have available for download. Um, So flyw.co slash content dash ROI will get you this this fillable PDF. This is just meant to frame your thinking, okay? So there's a template here that you can use to kind of get yourself in the headspace and start to warm up, up the engine. At the beginning, you want to talk about, just label it. What am I trying to do here? What is the goal that I'm trying to achieve? And this is like a cooking show. I'm going to show you the filled out version in a, in a second. Um, what, but, but specify that goal. Say it to yourself, if not to the rest of your team and, or you know, your, your boss. How am I? And I this is, this hold is, on. I got one question about the goals. This is more of an audit of what you yes. already have. Correct. Okay. Okay. You answered my question. Okay. So like, like what, are, what are the goals that I'm already trying to achieve? What touch points do I have out there? Going back to my slide of like, you've probably got things that are near each other in your experience right now. You've probably got some conversion opportunities. You've probably got some content. So without worrying about what we were coaching on and trying to draw those lines and get more um, uh, specific about the measurement, just start with 
okay, well, what have I got in order to support this stage of my, of my journey? And then we split this into, into two sections to remind you that you can be um, uh, thinking about this differently when it's a top of funnel versus bottom of funnel, bottom middle, of funnel. middle funnel kind of an activity. Okay. You might not be there yet. You might just have be thinking about this in sort of one path, which is fine. Um, but start with an understanding of what have I got? Okay. Yeah. And would you say when we're talking about the top of the funnel goal, I almost feel like it's objective goal, right? Like there's, yes. it's a little bit more why, but once you get to that bottom funnel, that goal needs to be more measurable. So the KPI needs to kind Again, of... Again, you're getting ahead of it. Okay, I okay. Know. Yes. So then on the second page, you want to get more specific. Correct. You want to go, okay, so I have some conversions. Now, with my thinking kind of adjusted with better context for myself, what are the touch points that I've got or that I'm going to execute on that are going to directly impact that conversion? I think we all do this inherently, maybe more intentionally, maybe just not as formally as this. And the value I think is here yeah. is, is that it lets you build better campaigns and it lets you avoid mistakes um, that you might repeat because you're just kind of going through the motions of something you've done previously. And again, I use this as, you know, when we're formalizing content plans and content strategies, and we're talking about larger organizations, again, that's mm -hmm. a good portion of our co customers. It's introducing this to multiple business units. Sure. And that is 100, like how many times we'll go into, okay, you've, oh, you find out a campaign later on. I'm right. like, wow, you've got all this traffic coming from this, but we're not having any discussion with you, that you team. Can, you can absolutely scale this. I yes. think, I'm glad you brought that up because you can small mom and pop shop, Correct. a single contractor kind of a situation can do this. Yep. I need people to call me. Great. That it's, it's a, it's a simpler thought exercise, but this is the same um, process process for a larger client for an enterprise size um, uh, environment. Break it down by business unit, break it down by product, break it down by campaign, by time of the year and all that kind of stuff. And and the more of sort of these templates that you can adopt and the more formal you can get about, uh, about following that kind of a process, not specifically this way, but in a similar structure, the better you'll be at understanding, well, what's working, what's not, and what should I be doing again? Perfect. All right. Once you've done all that thinking, then you get down to measuring how this all works. And so this is where using a tool or your own analytics, what have you, you do need to sort of start to build an association between what were my outcomes and which content helped me get there. And so this is where you do need some sort of data platform, analytics, Google, what have you, to be able to tell you, okay, if that was where somebody got to, what did they touch along the way in order to get there? And, you know, we're suggesting here that you're just counting those. You might weight them afterwards, but just count um, Correct. How, how many got through. So if we were to look at one of these templates filled out, uh, here's, here's an example. So I want to get new visitors. I need new eyeballs on my site. So my goal is, is simply that. How wow. am I going to do that? Uh, I'm running some digital ads right now. I've got social happening. I do have some landing pages to make sure that they get relevant content when they arrive on my site. Um, I know that I can measure things like ad clicks and posts and shares. Once they're on my site, I actually need to turn them into somebody that I start to get to know. So I want a, a sign up. Um, I have a modal pop up on my site. You, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, so now it's the exact same information on the first page, but turned into a, a slightly. We're starting to, to narrow the funnel, right? Those are my. These are my conversions, and you'll see here that well, actually, some of these touch points can cross pollinate and they can support each other. And that's what this exercise is helping you do is get um, uh, some awareness of where do I have overlap or where do I have things that are actually um, um, providing twice as much value. If you fill out this template, the bottom will partially fill in for you. The conversions will show up here based on what you typed above, but I've kind of gone and summarized my touch points that I have here. So now I can see that okay, well, my Google ads are resulting in landing page visits. Um, I did run an ad to try and drive somebody straight to my newsletter sign up. Um, that wasn't quite as effective, you know, for example. 
I've got my pop-up though, that has seems to be working really well. And that's what everybody's using to sign up. Um, if I'm really keen on getting more workshop registrations, I can tell that that landing page that talks about it and drives to different um, call, has a different call to action is really effective. And this template will help you just sort of add these all up so you can see which touch points are having um, a higher impact. Now, I mentioned earlier, you might want to weight this differently, but that's kind of an exercise you can, you can do afterwards. So hopefully that helped. Um, I we, think it would. We are at um, the half hour mark, yep. which we always want to make sure we're staying strict to. So thanks for tuning in um, and hanging out with us. Okay. We are going to hang around a little bit longer if anybody is interesting, interested. I've got a few more questions because you know what we've done today, Stephen? What have we done? We've spent half an hour talking about a digital experience um, uh, element, and we haven't said the words artificial intelligence. Oh, yes. So I've got a few more questions for you <laughs> around that. Okay. And some thoughts. And um, can you hang around with yeah. me for a few let's, more minutes? Let's go. Cool. Um, so anyway, if anybody has to drop off, we get it. Thank you. If you want to hang around for this uh, more of a chit chat, please, uh, please do. So uh, I've got some thoughts on this, but how do you okay. think AI is going to impact this kind of um, exercise, content ROI specifically, understanding the, uh, the, the return you're getting on your content. It's going to be a fun journey and a fun ride for a lot of, you need to be an early adopter, unfortunately. Like last time you said, hey, are marketers really going to be able to use this? And I'm like, well, you know. You're not saying somewhat. that I convinced you, are you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's a tool that can be used, but it's for, for marketers specifically, I think there's, there's better methods. For this part around content ROI and getting better, getting to the bottom of the funnel, mm -hmm. this is where I think AI is going to really take off, Yeah, right? Because uh, Google Bard is already showing some amazing results in like SEO is just going to change dramatically. And if you're not in front of it, you're but what, what is, like, going to be how do you? How do I get in front so, of it right now? I don't even know how, like... So there are already with ChatGPT, you can find Google Chrome extensions, and this is an easier one, just, you know, Google Chrome extensions for ChatGPT yeah. that give you summaries on, it'll look over your content and make recommendations based right. on the keywords that you want for SEO and it'll mm -hmm. change everything for you yep. and it'll make it that much better. It will then keep an optimized up-to-date recording to make sure you can stay higher in your page ranks. And that's just for SEO. So, now, I, and, and yeah, and so on the analytics, on the, so coming back to our topic of content ROI, like how do I know which content is having the right impact on my experience and my desired outcomes? That's where AI is gonna be really correct. powerful because it's gonna find patterns in the data that it's gonna to present to you. Yeah, a, a lot of the tools right now um, but not all of them. Some of them have already got AI and predictive modeling yeah. built into them, <laughs> site the insight, yeah. um, uh, to, to surface that information, um, and give you some insight that you didn't sort of, you weren't thinking about. Yeah. And if we're looking at, you know, broaden the AI, um, discussion to machine learning, which has been around for a little bit, it, it, where I always see a little bit more of a push and a little bit more of a focus where AI is headed is with search. Yep. So if you're looking at platforms like Caveo, Elastic, you know, they're already ahead of the curve on how search recommendation works and how that is tied into content because they now scan content and their backend does everything. So they're allowing their machine learning algorithm not gonna, it's I not mean, AI, AI used to be a really well-written SQL query, right? right. Like it used to Absolutely. be, it that, used to be, that used to be oh, what it was. if you think about some of these different signals that are in the data and if you program for them, you can get a more sophisticated solution. AI really just kind of looks at a broad set of data and, and is trained to find patterns that you aren't even aware to ask for. Right? Yes. Um, I... And I think, okay, so that's great. I think that's going to be very true. Um, back to the content side of this, um, some of these tools right now, uh, we've talked about 
how they helped before, but I think that um, they're going to definitely accelerate content generation. Yes. I think we're going to be challenged with making sure that it's effective. It might be more effective than the way we can do it right now. Yep. We might have two robots giving this talk in a month. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, but yeah, go ahead. Another area is even think about the platforms that we use for content management. So traditionally now we have like single page layouts, right? And it's yes. a page. So we create a page of content. What's going to happen is it's going to be sections of content and AI is going to drive which sections are on the top, middle. Oh, it's going to re reorder. The it's going to reorder everything. And there are actual, I won't name them. There are actual tools now that do this right. where they'll take your platform and say, okay, this widget or this section will be here, right, here, right. and here. And it's almost like, like start with the data path, like say from Sitefinity Insights, sure. but then you just let it go. <laughs> well, and, and you're talking about content personalization. Now, oh, I, right? yeah. And so that's been a huge challenge for digital experience managers is, oh my God, you mean I have to get hyper specific and deliver a different message to all of my personas. And I, I have 10 of them because my boss said I had, and I can't even get two of them. Yeah. Right. So all of a sudden some, there'll be some tools that allow for that to just evolve organically through an AI model. That would be cool. And oh my God. Because what I see right now, the shift in marketing is a lot of marketers that are coming up aren't as creative as when we started. <laughs> <laughs> like some I don't of know how creative did, I am. But <laughs> well, some of the things I used to do from a creative standpoint were really interesting. Um, <laughs> CDs, handing them out. Here you go. This before the internet. And what I'm saying is because that's what marketers have to do right now. They have to really work with data. They have to work with content in a very narrow box. But if you're saying, no, the AI is going to handle that. Now we get to, to extent, really yeah. get to have fun with content. And let the AI pick where that goes. Yeah, let it let it figure that out the placement. That is where it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, you know, and not so much ChatGPT. There are some other really interesting. You can just Google, sure, platforms that personalize for AI. Um, they're going to be the game changers for marketers, mm -hmm. and that's where content ROI is really going to take a shift. And so the other note, I mean, those are very good grand examples. And I think that that's what the future has in yeah. store for us. Uh, today, if you want to get a leg up on some of this, we, we really went through sort of an emphasis on personas and yes. being intentional about your audience. If you go into chat GPT and say, give me a persona for a financial analyst, <laughs> it will give it, it to you in it 90 spits seconds. It out. So this used to be, this is one area and aspect where I'm, I'm really excited because it's really easy to skip this step in a project. And it's, Quite often it gets, you know, oh, we don't have time or there's no, not enough budget to do that kind of thing. Well, here, really fast, really lightweight, get out some audience definitions and use that um, to help really give a, um, a solid foundation to the work that you're doing. And if you download the chat GPT Chrome extension, you will find that right there. There's actually a I did not know based. that. Yeah. I did not know that. It, it comes up as 12 squares. Do I have to pay 20 bucks a month for that? Um, no, actually that one's free. All right. There is a better pay to play, <laughs> but it's something we're using internally. So there you go. Uh, well, thanks, Stephen. This has been fun. It has been fun. All right. Are there so, any questions? Uh, we've been getting a few comments in. So thanks for that, for that engagement. We, Perfect. we really appreciate it. Um, we do this on a monthly basis. Hit follow, find us on LinkedIn. Uh, and we'd love to see you uh, again and again and again and again. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, gang. Take care.